Spyderco knife tabletop review. I just did an update on some special edition Spyderco blades and I was talking about the resilience in our special coloration. Dang, I wish I had had this one. Uh, Tactical Doodle coated this one and so getting a little bit of pocket wear at this time. So that's a sky blue handle, burnt bronze Cerakoted blade wearing my edge on it. Zip tie mod. Very cool. Uh, sometimes they're available in the web store. I said in another video, he doesn't really dig doing them because it takes him so long. I mean, he's putting in like two hours, three hours per blade. So when you factor out the cost, he's getting like below minimum wage. <laughs> he hates it. I told him, I was like, dude, you got to make some more of those knives. He's like, oh, it's too much work, man. I don't like taking it. And he takes it completely apart and then reassembles it, checks the fit and finish the centering. Enough said, enough said. Here comes a paramilitary. I'll put that on the table too. Boom. That was in the other video. Very cool. Website uh, has our patches. We have these dumbass civilians in stock still. Sticker, patch form. We have the small stickers, which are really cool for, I don't know, whatever, your work area. And by the way, when I wear this around, I get more comments from these than I ever have with any other patch. People just talk about it. Non-team peers are like, what's that about? That is so funny. I don't know. It's a conversation piece. But knife review on a Spider Co. And you probably heard, heard me singing the song. You know what it is. <laughs> Akuna patata. Patata, potato. And I don't even know where I put it. Where did I put that? There it is right here. Oh, yeah. Finally getting to the crux of the matter. The Spider Co. Akuna patata. <laughs> no, the patata liner lock. And by the way, I don't mean that in any disrespectful way. I just like the way it sounds. It's a cool name. And I love this knife. I really like the patata that is going to be c204 gp and it is part of their ethnic series very cool so i'm going to show you against i guess we can do it against the paramilitary for size that's always kind of helpful sorry i want to move this gun here for a second it's going to go bye bye lower the camera just a little bit so we can focus in so there's the paramilitary on the top and the patata liner lock on the bottom. So pretty similar in overall length. Blade length on this one is about 3.9 inches. So it's actually the blade is actually a little bit longer, of course. And the overall length is, I think, like 8.7 or so on the patata. I just like its looks first, first and foremost. It's just a cool looking blade. Very Italian looking. So yeah, it's ethnic series, obviously. And we've visited with Spider Co. And talked about with Shemp. I love that guy. Ed Shemp is awesome. As he's designed his ethnic series, it's interesting listening to his philosophy. And I, there really has been very, very few, have been very few knives in the ethnic series that I did not want to possess. I, I like them all. The Navaja comes to mind. I love it. And I don't have it here because Tactical Doodle stole it from me. And he loves that knife. The Navaja. So it kind of has that, to me, that Italian stiletto design influence to it. Of course, it's manual action. So a very slender, very useful blade. I said in the other review that for my EDC knives, I like a thinner profile blade. I've always said that. Just helps with food preparation, opening packages, and the real stuff we do with a knife. Tactical blade, maybe, but it is lacking in jimping here. It's completely devoid, and you know, that's what I see a lot on the Ethnic series. It's almost like it's a little bit more about style than first cool. This is wearing Sal's logo on it right here. If this patata had jimping, I would be so stoked. I still love the blade, but jimping would just almost make it perfect for me personally. Now, if I end up buying this, this is a loner for now. If I end up buying it, though, guess what? I will jimp it. <laughs> I'll, I'll take my Dremel and jimp it right here like you've seen me do through the years. Yeah, I can still sell it that way. TMPers love my jimp blades. They go really quick. So, you know, for a standard knife owner, would you jimp it? It really depends. Are you one that holds on to your blades forever? Or do you buy them and then turn them over? If you ever think you'll sell your C204, don't jimp it. Just leave it. 
Stock form is better. Most guys will like it just in stock form, not you jacking it up. Very sharp, sharp tip here. And the sharpness of this patata is insane. Really nice grind on it. There's a timing on the pretty thin liner lock, actually, captured variety. And you can see as you peer into the liners there, I don't see any skeleton, skeletonizing there. Not a big deal. It's still around 4 ounces, so the weight is pretty decent. G10 handle scales on this. Medium traction. You know, a little bit of sharp edges going on here. But you could sand that. Again, don't do it if you ever want to resell it. Just leave it. And deal with it. I would say it's obnoxious, though. In hand, it feels pretty good. I do notice there's some sharp transitions, as, as I've always called them, right here. I, I notice it, just being honest. Love the wire clip. It's like one of my all-time faves, dudes. <laughs> all-time faves. I love the wire clip. So here we have it on the Manix Lightweight. I've raved about it forever. One of my all-time faves. Super lightweight. Kind of is invisible, too, and carry. Not a lot of people notice it. It secures quickly. It's easy enough to adjust if it springs out. Like I have caught them on things and sprung it out. So it's kind of bent, and then I'll just undo it. Bend the spring clip back, reattach it. That's kind of tricky because when it's bent, I kind of really got to get a pair of pliers and push it down to the handle set and then attach it. It's a single screw attachment. You can see a big old lanyard hole here. One thing I love about the Patata, and I'm so glad I remembered this, I was talking about the transitions. That's a super minor criticism. What I really like is the handle's long enough for me. See that? Plenty of real estate on the C204. Really like that. Speed. You do have a little bit of an occlusion here in the handle. It is milled out nicely. You can zip tie it here or put a deployment device that might help. I didn't try to do it with this because I want to keep this knife nice to get back to its owner. Speed is excellent. Once you get a hold of it, get some purchase. Lockup is perfect. Retention. Good. Nice detent there. Can I shake it out? Yep. Not too much retention. I don't want that. I want it, you know, perfectly balanced. It's your stop pin. Centering. Really nice. Love this knife. Again, a good look at how it compares against another Hall of Fame Spider Co. Competitive options. I don't know if I'm going to give you too much to look at here because I don't have too much in the box. <laughs> but for size comparison, I will give you the Infidel. <laughs> this is the double-edged version by, uh, of course, Benchmade. Here I go, stabbing my cloth. Typical. Look at that. That's an interesting comparison, actually. Dudes, the Infidel with the Akuna Patata. I like that. Akuna Patata. Line King reference. I don't know. I'm just being silly, man. I need to get more oxygen in here. Which one would you prefer to carry? Nothing fancy. Uh, dudes, I love my Infidels. I've been carrying them so much lately. I absolutely love them. Yeah, it's an auto. This is a manual action. It just depends. I have my other one, my clip bladed one. I super love that knife. I've been carrying it a ton. Uh, to be honest, probably my Infidels, if I have to answer. I just really like the out, out, out the front, so I've just been really enjoying them lately. This is going to be super fast, so you put a clip on it, I'm sorry, a zip tie or a deployment device, dude, it'll be just as fast as an auto, if not faster, because you're just waving it from the pocket, out it comes. I think the high points are it's very long handle length, which is very comfortable, long, slender, classically designed blade. Super sharp, sharp tip for detail work. Big Spyderco hole. I love that. Perfect clip. Positionable to the other side, by the way, and thankfully tip up only. Good retention. Really, the only criticism I could level to it is maybe the cost. It's not exactly cheap. Uh, it's a little bit expensive. You can see it is made in Italy, and I'm kind of glad I remember that because I forgot to tell you it's in 690 steel. Very typical for Italian knives. I could put some guesses together of who's making this for Spyderco, but I won't do it on camera. doesn't matter. It's high quality. N690 is super rust resistant, by the way, in my testing. I love N690 steel. It's not my favorite, but I mean, I definitely wouldn't discount a knife just because it features N690. 
nothing I can really say bad about the knife. Maybe the cost a little bit and that it's not gimped. Other than that, it's pretty much cool. Great addition to a collection. Nothing fancy.